But in a race between Trump and what could be a crowded or even just one-on-one Republican field, shouldn't the media have an obligation to cover it the way we would with any other top candidate? Let's ask John Ziegler, conservative media commentator and the co-host of the Death of Journalism podcast. John, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. What do you make of this? Should the media be covering these more bizarre comments more often? Well, first of all, Dan, let's stipulate on the Ron DeSantis attack that historically, whenever the Republican frontrunner has accused one of his challengers of pedophilia, it has been a big story. I think we can all remember back to 2008 when John McCain accused Mitt Romney of pedophilia and what the reaction was. To, I'm sorry, that never actually happened. And if it had, it would have been the biggest story of the year. And one of the biggest problems here, Dan, is that we have been all desensitized by the insanity of Donald Trump, and including the media. And there's another reason why this story has not broken through. It's not just desensitization. It's because of perverse incentives. We have perverse incentives on both sides of the spectrum here. The right-wing media doesn't want to touch this because it basically forces a commentator or a conservative outlet to take a side between Trump and DeSantis. And in this particular case, you've got to take DeSantis' side if you care about the facts. That is not a good position for a conservative commentator to be in right now. On the left, it's even more dicey because they certainly aren't going to support Trump. But if they tell the truth about this, they have to make DeSantis into a victim. And they don't want to do that either. So we basically have a situation where nobody has an incentive to tell the story, I guess, except for you. And thankfully, you're touching on it because it's really important because to me, the real headline here is... Donald Trump telegraphs that if he doesn't win the Republican nomination in 2024, he's going to torpedo Ron DeSantis in the general election. And to me, as someone who does not want a second Joe Biden term, it's basically, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? And are Republicans, and and just in general, people banking on the fact that many of these comments are made on Truth Social rather than on sort of Twitter or major sort of um, social media platforms and somehow that makes it different? That absolutely gives an out for a lot of people to ignore this. Because Truth Social has nowhere near the reach of Twitter, especially among the media, it's as if it doesn't really happen. But this gives Trump a huge advantage because he gets to to tell his base of base of base support, the strongest, most cult-like supporters he has, anything he wants without any of the negative. And that is a very dangerous situation. And it's interesting, I know NBC has said, uh, reported that Trump will eventually come back to Twitter. I have told you on this show before, I think Trump needs to come back to Twitter for both his primary and general election campaigns. And unless he's legally obligated not to do so, I think he eventually will. If he was doing this on Twitter, there would be far greater news media scrutiny. But for some bizarre reason, he gets to have his cake and eat it too on Truth So. And it's part of the reason that DeSantis isn't hitting back that hard, meaning DeSantis is sort of ensuring, I don't think DeSantis wants to really talk about this stuff right now. So he's sort of soft peddling around Trump. I firmly agree with the way that Ron DeSantis is handling all this. Don't mention Trump by name, ignore him as much as possible, but when forced to respond, simply say, scoreboard. (laughs) That's the response to Donald Trump, scoreboard. Because on the scoreboard, Ron DeSantis will beat Donald Trump every single time. Now, if it's a multi-candidate race, I still like Donald Trump's chances. And unfortunately, from my perspective, I think that's where we're headed. John Ziegler, as always, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.